Welcome to Shraf's technical series. In today's session, we will discuss Redis Time Series Database. So Redis Time Series Database is a module in Redis which can store time series data. And we discuss Redis Time Series in our uh, Shraf's sessions because we have a ticker plant implemented in Redis where we store the real-time time series of various talks based time series assets in the Redis database. So today's session is a high level introduction of uh, Redis uh, time series and uh, how, how to interact with the time series. In a later session, we will discuss the Golang code, which we wrote to upload time series data to the Redis database. So we already discussed a Golang crash course. So we have all the necessary information to go through that uh, ticker plant uh, code base implemented in Golang. So if you go through these video sessions in Golang, you would be ready to implement the ticker plant in Golang. Today's session will just focus on the Redis time series database, how the data is structured, how to interact with the time series database. And as I mentioned in the next session, we will discuss the interaction with the Redis time series database with Golang. So most of this today's discussion is uh, from these references. So I accumulated all the data into these tables so it will be a quick uh, cheat sheet for us when we implement any time series uh, related uh, code base. Now the Redis time series, as I mentioned, is a module in the Redis time series, Redis uh, database. So Redis is implemented in C and uh, various modules can be added to Redis to give it a new functionality like Redis JSON, which gives JSON query capabilities, Redis time series, which gives it capability to store Redis uh, uh, store time series data. So the memory model in Redis time series. Redis uh, time series is implemented as a linked list of memory chunks. Each chunk has a predefined size of samples. So each sample or each uh, entry in a Redis is a tuple of uh, 128 bits. 64 bits are used for time step and 64 bits are used for values. So unlike other databases, uh, say for example, MySQL RDS database, we have a row and columns and in a single row, you have multiple columns where you can store multiple data points for that row. Even in MongoDB, where you have a collection and each collection will have a document, uh, a list of documents. And the document in uh, MongoDB is a JSON. So you can put whatever arbitrary JSON you want in that uh, uh, collection since it's a NoSQL database. But in Redis, when we talk about a time series, it's just a single series. Just like uh, uh, Python uh, series, Panda series, it's just a single time, uh, time series. So that's why you have a 28-bit tuple with the timestamp and its value. That's all there is in a Redis time series. Then there are various other methods to stitch these multiple time series to give it a la logical view, which we'll discuss in a bit. So I'll go back to the uh, this uh, documentation. I have the commands here. Now I'll just go quickly through some of these commands. I'll run them in the Redis insight. And then the rest of the session, I'll quickly go, go over these commands. Uh, you can try them on your own later. So I'll just uh, try a couple of them now. So ts time series dot create creates a time series. So let me run that. So I already have that created, so it says it's already there. Or you could say ts create a time series name. For example, here you use sensors if you are using uh, sensor data. In our case, we are going to use uh, financial data. And then the retention, uh, for how many days do you want to keep the data? Data older than that will be dropped by Redis. So in this case, we have uh, put it for one month. So 
any data older than one month will be dropped by the Redis time series. So that way you can conserve your uh, memory. And then to add a value to the time series, you just do time series add, time series name, and the timestamp. The timestamp is in milliseconds. Duplicate policy. So in our case, we already implemented the timestamp. And our duplicate policy is to block. Whenever we add a duplicate value to the same timestamp, Redis would not allow because our policy duplicate policy is set to block mode. If you set it to update, then it will update the timestamp. So we'll skip that, but that is an option in Redis. Then we had the time sensor at the data point with the latest timestamp. So these are so there's a mistake in the documentation. It should be a star. So if you give a star like that. It will pick a latest data point, latest timestamp, and add it to that. So it has inserted at this timestamp. If I run it again, the timestamp has incremented. See, it has added at that time. So this is the latest time timestamp. So it added 26 there. So these are latest timestamp. Then you can get uh, multiple timestamps. Like this, so if I, you can do m add timestamp uh, time series multiple ads. It will add uh, it will block again because we already added those. So it added them. Okay, I so that's the way you add multiple timestamps check it's giving an error message so we added values to these two timestamps so using mmat you can add multiple values similarly you can delete a value you can delete from time series at a particular timestamp, delete at a particular timestamp. So these are the create, update, delete uh, commands. Now labels to group the time series. Now why do we need labels? Like I mentioned, Redis time series is a single series where you have uh, a timestamp and a value. But if you look at any time series, you would have multiple related values. For example, for stocks, every day you have an open, close, maybe if you have volatility, etc. So for that same timestamp, you would have multiple values. In Redis, you cannot put multiple values in the same uh, time series. So for that reason, you can group multiple time series using labels. So in our case, for example, for so in our case, for example, we created a time series called Bitcoin-USD. And to Bitcoin-USD, we assign these labels. It's an asset type of uh, crypto, and it's an asset name, Bitcoin-USD. So with this, you can group multiple time series that are related to Bitcoin-USD into, uh, so that you can query across them. So we'll go through that in a bit. These are compaction rules. In compaction rules, when you create a time series, yes, create a compacted time series, and then you can create a rule saying whenever you add a value to sensor one, put the aggregation by average every minute. This is milliseconds. So every minute, get the average of sensor one and put that in sensor one compacted. So that way you can create accumulated values like average, standard deviation, etc., into a separate time series. So you don't have to put any values in here. Redis will automatically calculate for you. So whenever you add a value to sensor one, Redis will internally calculate the averages every 60 minutes and put that compacted value into 
this time series. So that's how you use compaction. Now filtering or querying the data. We'll uh, just go through these commands quickly. Now, for example, I'll go through the Bitcoin example I discussed again last time. Now, Redis time series, multiple range, plus minus, beginning to end, beginning to end of uh, what all available data, filter, we give asset equal to Bitcoin USD, right? Because there's some series to which we assign label Bitcoin iPhone USD. Now, if we run that, it takes a bit, there's a lot of data. So that query has returned. These are all the time series to which we have applied that label. So for example, if you want to check this one, TS info, there's a lot of in data, so that's why it's hanging. TS dot info BTC hyphen USD Let's go one number, let's go AVG. So it has a label of asset type Bitcoin hyphen USD. Right? So because it has the same label, when we queried on asset type Bitcoin iPhone USD, we got all these time series which have that label. So that way you can tag multiple labels, tag multiple time series into, say, for example, sing, uh, single relational database table. So you have individual time series. You apply them a label. In our case, call that label as a table name. Once you apply that table name, all these various time series can be grouped together into a single table. So that way you can visualize a time series with uh, multiple, multiple time series into a single group. So in our case, for example, here we have all these are Bitcoin related uh, time series. So with that, you can do cross analysis on a single timestamp. We go to more information and display logarithmic scale so it is much clearer. So I displayed it in the logarithmic scale for the time series. Now various metrics of the Bitcoin USD are shown on this graph. You have uh, Bitcoin was around 27.1 and then it dropped in subsequent days. So this way you can see multiple time series on a single plot if you apply labels to them. So that's about filtering and querying on labels. Area ID is a label here. Similarly, by range, or you can filter by a particular label. Then uh, you can filter by value. So you give them a value. So for example, we want to get all the uh, all the Bitcoin USD occurrences in the time series with the value equal to 26k. So you'll get all the timestamps where the value was 26k. So that way you'll know historically at what points in time the time series at that value. And then you can filter by value using the labels. Filter by value and the label, then by timestamp. These are various other ways. And I showed the aggregation here. So I'll just quickly go through them again. When you do an aggregation, uh, Redis supports multiple various aggregations, like it's shown here. So I, I yeah, these are the all aggregations it supports. These can be used for time series analysis and also uh, stock trading. Um, mostly useful in day, day trades because you get these in real time. These are all aggregates Redis supports. So you can do the aggregation. I'll quickly go over these commands. I won't run them so that uh, we don't prolong this video. So what we do here is TS range, range query on sensor one time series, plus or minus is all available data. So once you get all available data for sensor one, plus 
Hence, you are doing another query plus or pass this to aggregation function which is average and average it on per hourly basis. So you'll get a time series which is aggregated on uh, per hour basis. So we'll let's quickly try this on the Bitcoin USD because we have data for that. So I'll go back to logarithmic scale. So this is much more smooth than route. So it's a per hourly basis. It's quite fast and it gives you on per hour basis aggregate. And then per hour by label, you can do it by label too. We have, uh, uh, let me run it once again and then for this one on the same Bitcoin USD. Filter asset equal to. So all available data you aggregate hourly per hour because this is in milliseconds and filter for all time series which have label asset is equal to Bitcoin USD. So let it run. We we'll go back to logarithmic scale again. So we have multiple data points, much more smoothened data. So those are the aggregations. Then these are the aggregations min alignment on the sensor value. And uh, the description is here. If you have any questions on the these two, you could uh, ping me in uh, YouTube or here, I'll answer those. And then this is for map reduce. So you filter, then you group by region, and then you get the min. So this way you can aggregate across timestamp, group by region, and get the min in each region. So these are all the commands that time series, Redis time series supports, and they are, the queries are re really fast. So as I mentioned in the next session, I'll show how, how we created this Bitcoin UTC data uh, time series in Golang and how we loaded the data from WebSockets into this uh, time series and how we created this ticker plan for Bitcoin. Once we have that discussion in a future videos, we'll enhance our ticker plan to have more assets and then do a lot more analysis in real time. So with that, I'll close today's session. If you have any questions, please reach out in the YouTube channel or in the discussion tab here.